All right, it's time to apply everything that we've learned by creating an upvote application directly with Next.js 14 and Superbase. Okay, we start on the base that we had before. So we've got our subscribe, unsubscribe from article. We can remove the unsubscribe for this part. And what I would like to work on is this item here, the list article. So here I'm using Tailwind, so I'm going to do a bit of design. I'm going to have a container here and a max width. I'm going to probably unzoom a little bit and we should be good. Okay, so what I would like to do is to have here, our UL would be actually a class grid and I would have some gap between the elements. And I would give some shape to my uh, list item because in this list item, actually, I'm going to stylize a little bit. So if I want to respect the rules of doing things, I'm going to go to source, I'm going to create a new folder called components. And in these components, I'm going to have an article item, let's call it like this. And I'm going to initiate it directly in here. And on this article here, I'm going to just pass a type export type article here that would be actually of type article which an id which would be a string okay so here it's going to be mandatory i don't remember here no we've got a, a number okay we've got a number so it's going to be a number and the date here the created at it's going to be a um string yeah here and after that we're gonna have also what we're gonna have the title that would be a string so i can put my title string in here. I can come back. And here we can see that I got here this list of article. Let's put instead a UL, a div. And here I'm going to put my article item directly from here with my key. And I'm going to pass the article directly here. So article as a props. So I would have article here, but my here, my article item doesn't get the article yet so what i want to do is to define this article of type what type article up here so we are ready and i can already deconstruct my article with the title for now so what i can do here is to put my title and i'm going to keep it this way and if i come back to my app we've got the same logic if we do that you're gonna see after that we're going to have a complete logic inside the item directly. Okay, I'm going to add some shape to it. It's going to be border px4 py3. And when we come back to it, there we go. We're going to have what? We're going to have a cursor pointer. And there we go. So when we're going to pass on it, we're going to have a hover, let's say, a bg gray 900. So when I pass my mouse, we get this nice effect. Coming back to my page, I'm going to add here some uh, padding on, uh, some margin on the top and on the bottom. And we've got a, a list of articles that are displayed in here. That's totally fine. For the voting system, we would like to do it directly inside the article item. So what I can do here is to display, for instance, my H2. Let's put an H2. And here I'm going to have a div and I would like to have a number of votes. So I'm going to work first on the design then we are going to implement all the logic. Okay, so here I would like to have a number of votes but I don't get any vote yet. We are going to create that logic just after. So I'm going to have at first, let's say a span up and a span down. And in between, we're going to have a number of votes and let's say zero vote. When we come here, we see that it's down. I would like to have it on the side. So what I can do is to have a flex item center justify between by using Tailwind. And suddenly we've got this. For those one, we would like to have a class grid. So we have on the top and on the bottom my element. And I would like to have the items on the uh, center. So here I can just put here um, grid and text center. It would be good. And we should be good. We've got zero vote. Okay, I got up and down. I don't want to keep up and down like this. I would like to have icons. So if I go to icons.js.org, I'm able to download some icons and when I click to them here, I can copy paste here, for instance, on React TS. 
I can come back to my app and I can go to components and I can create a folder icons. And here I'm going to have a hub.tsx. There we go. And I can just copy paste the code that I got. And I need to use the client here. So I'm going to use the client this way on the props. I can put any for now. It's going to be good. And we've got our first icon, so I can come back here. And instead of having a up, I can use here icons up coming directly here from where import icons up from here, the components slash icon slash up. And we should be good. So here I need to come back and to change the name. Otherwise, we will never find it. I need to export default, of course. And when I come back, there we go. We've got our up here. If I want to have only one icon, what I can do simply is to do exactly the same. However, here we are going to rotate 180. And when I come back, I get down and I get up. And if I want to use only one icon, I can just use rotate 180. And when I come back, there we go. We've got our two icons here. Okay, so now we got our list of articles ready with our votes. And what I would like to do here is to come back to my Superbase and create a new table. And this table is going to be a table votes. And inside here, I'm going to create a new column, which would be called user ID, which will actually receive the UUID of the current user. Remember, we need the session to do it. I got my user ID, which is here. And I'm going to add also the article ID, which here is going to be an int directly in here. And we're going to be able to save the user ID and the article ID. What I can do immediately is to create a relation between my articles here, ID and the ID here. And also, if I would like to, to create it, uh, a reference between the off uh, ID, the off user here, ID directly, if I would like to. Well, I'm not going to do it. I don't need it. Okay, we've got our table votes. What we're going to do at first is to create a new RLS policy. And this new RLS policy would be that everybody that is authenticated could read the votes. Okay, so remember, we want people to be authenticated. Otherwise, we can let them public if you want to. It's going to be the same. So I'm going to type read for all. I'm going to click on review, save policy, and we should be good. So now everybody is able to read the votes. So back to our app, when I click here, uh, I should add actually a new row inside my votes actually using all the um, tables, all the columns of the table that I set up here. I'm going to go to hooks. I'm going to duplicate use articles and I'm going to call it use votes. And I'm going to create here actually a hook called use votes with votes and set votes. And this is just an example, right? Because after we are going to be able to retrieve the vote through the articles. So here I'm going to type get votes and I'm going to call all the votes set votes. And here down here, I could have votes and get votes directly from here. That's the basic. Now I want to set a new vote so I can use a new function called const new uh, new vote. OK, and it will be an asynchronous function that will take two parameters. It's supposed to take the user ID and the article ID. However, remember, we can get our current session. So what we can do here is to call first our session. And we don't want to mix the hooks together. What we would like to do is just to call the session directly from here. So I'm just going to copy paste in here my um, element. Otherwise, if you want, you can pass the user ID here. Need to go faster. I'm just going to call my session here. So the article ID, which will be a, a number, and then we're going to call our session. If there is no session, we want to return an error, return alert. Uh, you are not log authenticated, which will actually never happen because, because we don't get access if we are not authenticated. OK, so remember, I got my data with my session. I'm going first to console log my data to be sure how it looks like. And I'm going to bind this new vote here. 
I'm going to bind this new vote to my article item. So I'm going to come back here and directly inside my item, I'm going to here use the article ID that I got up here. So I can use votes directly inside my item here and I'm going to call what? I'm going to call new vote. And we will see that here, this new vote will have two roles to set a vote and to delete a vote. So I'm going to click here, uh, new vote. And I'm going to say uh, that here, every time I'm going to uh, click on my icon, I'm going to set the new vote and I need what? I need the article.id, okay? So the article is coming from up here. And remember, we've got the ID here. So what I can do is to put the ID like this. Let's go here, we just test. And when I click, we can see that I got my session and I got the user here in my session. So I would deconstruct here my session. So I got what? I got the user and inside the user, I got the ID. So I will be able here to get everything. If I got my ID, now I can just const here data error is equal to await super base coming from our super base library. We're going to say from here and here on from, we're going to use votes and we are going to insert what? We are going to insert the article ID that we've got here, but also the user ID, which is equal to uh, ID here. And what we want to do is to select the element, which is a single element. Okay. And what we're going to do with that, we are going to set it up directly to votes. So I'm going to just set new set vote, sorry, here with previous data, which will be for now any, because we don't get any type yet. And we are going to return the previous state. And with that, we are going to uh, actually get the data here, our element up here. Let's come back in here. Let's just try to click. And here we've got an error. Why? Because we didn't set up the RLS policy. Back in the RLS policy, we can read them, but we can't write them, which is a common mistake. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to insert, and I'm going to say that everybody can insert a vote to start, because after we are going to change that. So I'm going to put insert for all. I'm going to click on review. I'm going to save on policy. And I'm going to get back to the table immediately to have a look at it. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to click on upvote. And look at this. We've got a vote that has been recorded with my user ID and the article ID. The only problem is that if I click a lot, it will insert a lot of votes and I don't want that. I would like to stop and to say, hey, you can insert only if there is no record with my user ID and the same article. So how can we do this? In order to be sure that we're not going to have duplicates like this, we need to write a constraint directly inside our super base. So let's write this constraint. We're going to type alter table and then we are going to target our table, which is the votes. There we go. And we're going to add here a constraint. And the constraint we're going to add is going to be called unique vote, for instance. There we go. And we're going to say it's going to be unique. And here we are going to target here. We are going to target two keys. And the, those two keys are the combination, actually, of user ID and article ID. So with this constraint that we got here, we make the possibility to get a double vote on a combination of a user ID and article ID null. It will be impossible to vote two times for the same article. So I will click here on run. There we go. And now I'm going to get back to my votes table. And we are going to see here, I got only one, one vote. And I'm going to remove that. And if I try to vote again, I got a conflict and I can't insert a second vote. Two possibilities from now. Now we want to remove actually our actual vote. And the thing is that we don't get the vote locally yet. Actually, when we set the vote, we set the vote down here. But this is not really an easy way of doing it. What we would like to do is actually to remove our vote. What we can do 
is to push here a remove boolean on false. And if we remove, we're going to have this function delete vote to delete the vote that is equal to the article ID and the user ID that is supposed to be unique directly on the database. And then I can here bind here new vote with ID and true. Before that, I need to write the RLS policy to delete. So what I can do, I can go here. I'm going to unzoom and I'm going to say, hey, I want to delete. Okay. Only if hot UID is equal to a user ID. And remember, we've got here delete here for user ID. We can remove only if we own the vote. So I'm going to click on here, save policy. And we are able to delete our vote. I'm coming back here. Remember, I got a vote on this article. I'm going to click down. And when I come back, it removed my vote. Okay, all of that is really nice. However, we would like to get the votes. And to do this, we are going to come back to our hook. And we are going to come back to use articles. And when we fetch the articles, we would like also to fetch the votes directly here. So I'm just going to console log the data here and I'm going to get back there. And when we fetch the data, there we go. We've got the articles. And if we look to the first article here, we see that there is no vote. OK, so I'm going to remove that. I'm going to click here to vote again. And I'm going to update because we didn't work yet on the real time. And here we can see that we've got one vote that is here. So I'm going to get back. And what I want to do here is on my article item to display the number of the votes. So remember, on my article, I will have votes, which will be here. Um, actually, it will be mandatory. And we're going to have any for now because we don't have any type vote. And I would like to have vote length. So when I come back, look at this, we've got the number of the vote that is up here. At this point of the course, the best way would be actually to uh, have our function new vote, not inside the use vote. And this is where it's interesting, but actually to get it inside the use article hook. So here I can come back to use articles. And instead, I'm going to have here my function new vote. So I would need to update here my um, uh, article item. And instead of having here use vote, I'm going to have use articles. And it makes more sense because I'm on an article. So what we can do, which is a really fast solution, is to subscribe not only to the article here, and we are going to remove this, but we are going to subscribe to what? We are going to subscribe to the votes. And every time there will be a new vote, what we would like to do is to get the articles. So I'm going to just push that here. Before that, we need to enable the real time here on our vote. So I'm going to click on enable real time. So the trick here is to subscribe to the votes and to get the articles when there is a new vote. So we can come back to the app. I'm going to update. And here I'm going to click on new vote. And we can see here that I got one vote. And if I click again, I can see that my vote disappear. I hope you really enjoyed this short course about Next.js 14 with Superbase. And you can use this quick app directly from the repository. If you like this course, please subscribe, put a star on the repository, leave a comment. Thank you very much and see you next time.